Okay, so I need a new letterbox. This one's pretty much rusted through, the post is rotten, and it's ugly as anything. So with a bit of a jiggle, and... Oh, oh, oh. Free at last. And with that acting, the Oscar goes to... Right, better get started. I'm using these pieces of camphor laurel that I milled a while ago. First thing, I'd join an edge using my track saw, um, because I'll be sawing these on the table saw. I'd love to have a big bandsaw for resawing, but I just don't have the space. One split. Oh, blimey. That's a rude looking book match. Moving on. Uh, they then go through the thicknesser to tidy it up for gluing. Because these pieces are quite thin, I'm going to throw an obscene amount of clamps at this to try keep the boards as aligned as possible so I don't lose too much afterwards. Using my jack of all trades beat up chisel, I tidy up the excess glue squeeze out and throw it through the thicknesser before heading to the cross cut sled to cut the parts to length or width. I don't know to be honest. After ripping, I'll use my tapering jig to rip the angled pieces for each side. And then using a 25mm Forstner bit, I drill the rounded ends of the letter opening before quickly checking if I can see through both holes at once. I cannot. A jigsaw to roughly cut out the opening before moving to a router with a flush trim bit and a straight edge to tidy it up. As per the thumbnail, I'm going with box joints for this. So I set up my quick router box joint jig um, that I made from Make Something's video. I'll link to their video in the description if you want to make one. It's a great jig and it makes simple, tidy box joints like this. Ta-da! It can be easy to get turned around though, so just make sure everything's labelled like I am here and then take another minute to confuse yourself as necessary like I did here. The lid of the box is a shelf for magazines and larger letters, etc. This will sit in a dado cut into the sides. I take repeated shallow cuts on the table saw until the shelf piece seats well. Time for a quick dry fit. Everything appears in order here, so before moving on, I'll just cut a quick drip groove on the underside of the front pieces. 
before giving them all a good sanding. Usual story, up through the grids, 80 to 240, yada yada yada. Jeez, I've got to make a negative pressure sanding box or something. This is all over the place. I'm going to pre-finish the inside space before glue up. So I'll tape the edges of the shelf to maximise glue service on these shallow dados and then tape the fingers of the box joints. And for the finish here I've used a mix of boiled linseed oil, exterior varnish and turbs. It looks great but I didn't love the actual finish with this mix, more on that later. More sanding. Good. Oh, it's all over the place, Dan. Oh, that's better. Oh, or not. A quick round over on the opening to make it smoother on those precious letters. And it's time to glue up again. I'm making sure the glue gets on all aspects of the fingers and use some aluminium square clamps on the corners. to form, I use about just about every clamp I had to finish it up. A few hours later I come back, have a slurp of coffee while staring at this clamp abomination before tidying it away. Time for the router and flush trim combo to make its return to tidy up the joints. Now this next bit is super sketchy. I had to make the bearing on my rabbiting bit 1mm larger with some electrical tape before trying to use a plunge router on the narrow edge. Don't do it like this. I should have left the base larger and cut it to size afterwards and I should have rabbited the bottom before gluing it up or use a router table but I don't have that. Learn from my mistakes and do a better job. Anyway, glue that base in, clamp it up, and have a rest. Quick chamfer on each edge with a block plane, very nice. Time to sight the sander up with some more slapping. I'll spare you the rest of the sanding. Even though it's a letterbox for home, I can't resist putting a brand on it. So after measuring and marking, it's the usual story. Bore it out with a force in a bit, make a tuna mayo mix out of the wood shavings and glue, and then clamp it in place.
This time I'm just putting boiled linseed oil on to soak in whilst gluing up the lid. I tried to use less glue here because tidying up squeeze out inside would be a challenge. Trim the edges flush again and oil the outside of the lid. Time to use this can of spray varnish as a shake weight for a bit before applying five or so coats with sanding in between. For the lid pivot, I measure and mark carefully, then use a 2mm bit to drill with a backer to prevent blowout. I also made some simple washers out of this plastic shim. Now I'm knocking a small nail in until it's just through to the other side before positioning the lid into place and driving those nails home, and we're done. Taking it for a test drive here, including my best Sims character impression. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, take it easy.